million dollar question. That's a very uh -huh. good question. Thank, thank you. What's the answer? <laughs> no answer at all. So anyway, then oh. art. Hey guys, my name's Dan, and today's reaction is an older pitch meeting. This is Artemis Fowl pitch meeting. Now, with Ryan recently coming down with COVID, there being no new uh, pitch meeting this week, I thought it would be fun to go even further back into the pitch meeting catalog, one that I haven't reacted to before, and that's this one. This is a very interesting movie, and I'm very curious to see just how it all went down. And if you enjoy other pitch meetings, I've reacted to many of them for you to enjoy. And if you want to see future reactions that I do, you can go right below this video, click that like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell, because not only does it give you access to future reactions that I do, but also helps my channel out a ton. Plus, it's super easy, barely an inconvenience, and you can head on over and support pitch meeting and Ryan George as well. We have both of those channels down in the description. And without any further ado, let's go. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's based on a popular book series called Artemis Fowl. Oh, the word popular often leads to money, so I'm listening. Sure. Well, great. So, at the start of the movie, we're going to say that Artemis absolutely loves living in Ireland. Oh, yeah, he does? Yeah, so, obviously, we're going to show that he's, you know, really into surfing. That is the first thing that comes to mind when I think about yeah, Ireland. Totally. Yeah, And we're also going to have exposition scenes, you know, that explain what happens during the movie as it's happening, and that's going to go... You know, throughout the whole thing. Oh, what kind of exposition are we talking here? Oh, I've got a buffet of classic exposition scenes for you, sir. You're gonna love this. We've got narrator who's in an interrogation room. We've got news reporters covering things as they're taking place. We've got a psychiatrist showing up in one scene just to give backstory on someone. Are we gonna have characters saying, as you know, before telling each other things they already know? You know it. Oh, as you know, that's mm. tight. I do know that, yeah. So yeah, what's the deal tough. with Artemis Fowl, anyway? Oh, well, he's like a super smart, misunderstood genius kid. Is that what he's like in the books? Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, did, I didn't oh. read them. Oh, you didn't? Oh. You know, see, I looked through them, but you know, they're they're just filled with, with words. Oh, okay. I didn't oh, realize yeah, that. Sure, a whole a lot, lot of time, freaking yeah. words, sir. We're talking hundreds, if not thousands. Did you get an idea what the story's about? Should we should we look it up? Yeah, you know, I looked yeah, up I the mean, character probably. names on Google, and I saw uh -huh. something about fairies, so, you know, I think I got the gist. It says here Artemis Fowl is actually a criminal mastermind, and there's like a whole redemptive yeah. arc thing. He's like, he's like a Hans Gruber type. Oh, that sounds really Really cool. It's too bad we're not doing that. It seems like it's a pretty big thing. Like that's one of the main draws here. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I didn't put that in here. Feels like maybe we should. I'll tell you what. Yeah, at the probably. end of the movie, I'll throw in a line where he's like, "My name is Artemis Fowl, and I'm a criminal mastermind." But just exactly. to be clear, he's not gonna be one in the movie. Yeah, no, he's just like a smart kid, or at least that's what the narrator tells us. Okay. I mean, I feel like fans of the book will be a little upset. Well, we're not making this for fans of the book, sir. So, 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 who are we making it for? Ah, see, now you're asking the right questions. There's that's the million dollar question. That's a very uh -huh. good question. Thank, thank you. What's the answer? Oh. <laughs> no answer at all. <laughs> so anyway, then oh. Artemis, his father, he gets kidnapped. Oh, by who? By this hooded figure, Opal Kaboy. And this mysterious fairy wants to use a thing called an aculus to take over the world from the humans. And what's the deal with this Opal Kaboy? I just told you. Fair enough. And what's this aculus thing? It's basically this super powerful magical thingamajig that can do things. Things? Yeah, it can like open portals or something. It's really just one of those story things, you know, that everybody wants just as a thing to kind of drive the plot forward. A MacGuffin? No, no, thank you. I just had breakfast. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> Artemis Jr. gets a phone call from a possum cowboy or whatever it is that I said. And the cowboy's like, you know, if you want me to set your dad free, you're going to have to get me the, uh, you know, the new uh, Oculus Rift or whatever. What are, you, what are you talking about? Hey, do you have any games on your phone? Do I have? No, I don't. No, I don't have games what? on my phone. You don't? Okay, no, no, that's okay. I'll just keep going with the pitch. Okay, yeah, that sounds right, good. Yeah, so what else fair. happens? Like, what does Artemis do? Oh, yeah, okay. So he teams up with his dad's butler, this guy named Butler. And what's he going to do in the movie? He's going to be around, and sometimes he's going to say exposition, too. Okay. He also brings his 12-year-old niece on board to help out. And what does she do? Well, her big contribution is she brings Artemis a sandwich. Oh, well, sandwiches are pretty important. Thank God she, she was are. there. Yeah, and so then we're gonna see this underground magical world. I mean, this place has fairies and dwarves and all kinds of crazy stuff. Oh, wow. Well, it's gonna be interesting to see Artemis deal with that place. Actually, 95% of the movie's nope. gonna take place in a house. Oh, it is. Yep. So anyway, when we are in the magical world, we're gonna meet a fairy named Holly Short and this other one named Commander Root. Commander Root, huh? Yeah, and actually, side note, I already have Judy Dench attached to play the part. Wow, Dame Judy Dench. Yeah, as soon as her agent read the script, he begged me to get her in this thing. Wow. 
Powell. I'm kind of surprised because word on the street is that her agent absolutely hates her. Well, I don't know what to tell you. He oh. really wanted her in this movie. Also, <laughs> some other movie named Cats. Well, well, it sounds like those sabotage rumors aren't true after all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what does this Commander Root do? Well, she bosses people around and stuff. She says top of the morning. That's what they say in Ireland. That's they almost do. all they say in Ireland, if I understand correctly. I assume you do. So anyway, then Artemis captures that fairy, Holly Short. Why does he do that? Well, his plan is to get the elves to come to his house and then get them to get him the Aculus or something. Okay. But elves have this thing where they can mind control, so he has to wear these glasses. That sounds like the smart thing to do. Yep, but then immediately he takes them off and he's like, can I trust you? Oh, I thought he was like a boy genius. Yeah, no, he's still a genius, but I need them to be friends right away, so that happens just right off the bat. Well, okay then. So sure. then the elves, they decide to send in this dwarf, Mulch Diggums. And what's he like? Oh, he's like if a Hagrid cosplayer tried to do a Batman voice and failed. And why did they send him? Well, because he's really good at stealing things. Oh, okay. And he can unhinge his jaw and eat dirt so fast it goes flying out his rectum. What was that? And so he manages to get his hands on the Aculos, and now he's on Artemis's team as well. But how did that happen? When did he join the team? Unclear, but then a troll gets sent in, and they all have to survive. Oh, a troll, huh? Yeah, and then Butler pushes Artemis out of the way, and the troll lands on him and crushes his internal organs, and he dies. Oh, yeah, I forgot he was in the movie. Yeah, he's in the movie, and he dies. But then magic is a thing, so it's okay. He's yeah. not dead anymore. Oh, Everything's okay, fine. yeah, I feel I feel nothing. That makes sense. And so then, because magic is a thing, Holly Short is able to use the Oculus Rift to bring Artemis's dad back. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, 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 it's something, all right. So is it going to be tough for them to survive the big showdown with Opal Kaboy? Actually, it's going to be super, super easy. easy. Barely, barely an inconvenience. inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because there's not going to be one. Oh, there's not. There's no showdown. Yeah, yeah, no, we're all done here. Oh, well, you know, okay. So, yeah. uh... You want to play Fortnite or what's up? No, no, thank you. I've got, you know, I've got a lot of work and stuff. Oh, sure. Okay. Do you, uh, do you want to know what I think about the movie or? Uh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Do. Okay, sure. I think it's, uh, I don't know what to think. Yeah, I yeah, don't know same. what this is supposed to be either, to be honest. But I mean, it sounds like Artemis Fowl is a recognizable name, so we can't really go wrong here. People are going to love it. That's oh, a good boy. point. Oh, boy. Disney Plus's Artemis Fowl gets terrible reviews and Rotten Tomato score. So, yeah, I, I. I, my guess is this was definitely geared towards kids and you know with anything with kids you have to suspend your disbelief quite a bit but uh, there were just so many things in this just just didn't really uh, make any sense and the big dwarf character uh, I wasn't really a huge fan of him again if this movie is geared for kids I believe he made a David Bowie joke and I don't know how many kids out there know who the hell David Bowie even is. So that's going to do it for me here. Before I go, though, I want to give a huge shout out to all of my $5 up supporters on Patreon. Marvin Espinosa, Cruising, Wolver 310, Multidisturb 666, Jordan Bird, Lauren Davenport, Caster Cronage, Amber K, Raymond Bright, Joshua Tease, Chris Curtis, The Baba Duke, and Nick Dust Hazeltine. And if you too look at every name right at each and every one of my videos, plus many other fun goodies, maybe having me react to a past pitch meeting or two, please head on over to patreon.com slash react. That link will be right there. In the description, you can write below this video, click that join button there, or head right over my channel page and click that join button there. And with that being said, comment down below and let me know what did you think about Artemis Fowl. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Also, once you pass your exit out on other pitch meetings, got a nice playlist right over there full of them for you. Share this video, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, ring the notification bell because I put new videos every single day. And I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>